What if with just a few quick adjustments, you can improve the overall quality of your 3D prints? And these changes don't need to be extreme or groundbreaking. Sometimes the basics make all the difference for the quality of your 3D print. In FDM 3D printing, there are generally two schools of thought. One of these being where you wanna optimize your settings for your print quality, and the other where you wanna optimize more for strength and durability. In this video, we're gonna be focusing more on optimizing for the overall quality of your 3D prints. One of the most overlooked areas in 3D printing has to be orientation. Unfortunately, a lot of files that you find online aren't uploaded in the most optimal orientation for 3D printing. If we take something like this, due to its geometry, we wouldn't just wanna take this and print it down on its back, and that's the way this file was uploaded. Even though it was orientated originally to be placed flat on its back, we really don't wanna do that, and there's a few reasons. One of those reasons is we would have a top layer here, and that's the face of the overall model, and we wanna avoid top layers whenever that's the main feature of the part we're printing. Alternatively, we could take our file and place it in an upright orientation, but the issue there lies, now we have to deal with supports on each one of these individual ridges. And again, this is the facing feature of this model and we don't wanna mar it with our supports or anything like that. This is a model that I printed several times during testing for another video. And during this printing, I found the most optimal orientation for this file would be diagonal on the build plate like this. Because of this orientation, we're able to eliminate any top or bottom surfaces while also reducing the amount of supports required to print this file. For the most part, this model is fairly basic in its geometry, and mostly what we're trying to avoid is any top or bottom layer surfaces that may greatly reduce the overall detail of the file itself. Another area where orientation actually works out in our favor would be something a lot more complex. Our next example is something that we see a lot in 3D printing, especially from those who are newer to 3D printing. Neither of these prints are absolutely perfect, but I went ahead and printed them out in different orientations just to illustrate this problem that we see a lot more frequently. Due to the geometry of this model, we have an almost unavoidable issue when printed in this orientation. Since we have this subtle sloping throughout the entire top section, all we end up getting is stair stepping from our layer lines, and it's not really avoidable even when you lower your layer line height down to a much smaller number. Unfortunately, this is just a side effect of 3D printing as the way 3D printing works is just stacking layers on top of other layers. But when we change the orientation from something like this to this, our problem all but goes away. When we compare these prints close up, you can see that our stair stepping completely disappears as in this orientation, we don't have to worry about top surfaces nearly as much. You do have to contend with more supports as printed in this orientation, we really don't have to deal with supports, but we benefit from the fact that all that stair stepping is completely gone on the top layer of the saucer. And we could have done a little bit more to increase the overall quality of our vertical orientation. One of these things is adjusting the way our walls are printed or the amount of walls that are printed. But for demonstration, we'll just leave it at that. We still have a bit more to cover, but before we move on, let's go ahead and talk about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. With PCBWay, high quality on-demand manufacturing has never been easier. And with their easy to use website, ordering high quality 3D prints is simpler than ever. Simply upload your file to PCBWay and then select the options you are looking for fill out a little bit of information, and then hit Submit Request. And PCBWay's team of highly trained professionals will review your project before manufacturing. And with services like 3D printing to metal 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, and PCB manufacturing, PCBWay has everything you would need for your next project. So make sure to check out PCBWay today at PCBWay.com. This next topic is a little bit more fun, and since I printed this plaque in a previous video, I've had several people ask me exactly how I was able to do this. If you look at these two prints, you'll see that the finish is quite different. Ignoring the size difference, when we compare these two 3D prints, we'll see that this one looks blotchy, and overall the quality, even from a good distance away, doesn't look like something you'd exactly be happy to see. One of the best things about 3D printing is the ability to take items and make it where they don't look like a 3D print. And that's exactly what we're doing here as 
You see, it's a lot different of an effect, even from far away. This tip won't work for everything, but it makes a huge difference for the right things. And that would be your top layer infill. This is called Hilbert Curve, and it's easily one of my favorite things to use when printing the right type of file. In 3D printing, your speed, acceleration, and movement of your nozzle have a major impact on the overall quality of your finish. This is especially bad when dealing with your darker filaments, and we could see parts go from matte to glossy to glossy to matte. But when we're using Hilbert Curve, we don't have this problem due to the uniformity of its geometry. This doesn't work for everything, but it's amazing in the right applications. If you're using Orca Slicer or any third-party variation, go to your strength section and then go to your top bottom shells and then look for your top surface pattern and change that to Hilbert Curve. Keep in mind, unless you really have your first layers incredibly dialed in, you might want to avoid using this as your bottom layer pattern as it can make things incredibly harder for you. Next, let's take a look at some of our more organic prints and some simpler geometry. One of the downsides to printing more organic structures is when you're using an FDM 3D printer and you see a lot of layer lines in your 3D print, it kind of takes away from the effect as you know you're not looking at something organic and natural. Instead, you're faced with layer lines and something that's obviously 3D printed. However, if we look in our process in Orca Slicer, we can search for something called fuzzy skin. Now, you don't want to use its default settings as it's a little bit outlandish. When you reduce these to the right values, you get a really nice organic feel to your organic 3D print. And it takes it from FDM to something that you would see more attuned on a shelf like Ikea or Better Home and Gardens or something like that. Because overall, our goal in 3D printing should be to take our prints and make them look as less like a 3D print as possible. Again, this doesn't work for everything, but it works really well for the right thing. And we should get used to changing our process based off what we're 3D printing. One really quick tip for 3D printing has a lot less to do with your settings and more to do with your hardware options. We won't go into this topic super in depth. We've done two other videos on that, but sometimes it's really important depending on what you're printing to be very specific about your plate selection. The print we showed earlier doesn't work too well in our chosen orientation when using stock plates, and it's prone to a extremely high failure rate. However, it does work incredibly well when using the CryoGrip Pro Glaciers. There are a lot of people out there who will never use anything other than their stock plate, and there's nothing really wrong with that. However, using third-party plates has a tendency to make your life a lot easier, and we've done videos on these, so I'll make sure to have those linked in the description. Lastly, let's go ahead and talk about calibration. Most people I've been talking to haven't actually tuned or calibrated their filament profiles as they're afraid that it's going to mess things up or make things more difficult for them. Personally, I don't like the term calibration because it leads the user to believe that they're changing things about their printer when it couldn't be further from the truth. Instead, all you're doing is tuning your filament profiles. Everything in this process is completely reversible and you absolutely cannot overwrite your main profiles and there are no changes made to your hardware. We're not gonna get really in depth into this topic and you don't need to feel overwhelmed by the huge PDF of calibration instructions. Instead, there are primarily two calibrations that you should focus on. The first calibration that you wanna focus on here would be your flow rate. The primary idea is to get a chip that feels as smooth as possible but also on visual inspection, doesn't have any holes or gaps or over extrusion in the chip itself. The next calibration would be pressure advanced. And there's a few options here, but primarily you wanna make sure that you're using tower as opposed to line or pattern. The reason being is when you're using line or pattern, you need to make sure that your first layer and your offset is completely near perfect for an accurate result. Here's some advice that most people aren't going to give to you. There is a calibration for a temperature tower, but the most common thing I hear from people is they can't tell the difference in their temperature tower from temperature to temperature. This is exactly right, and for most common filaments, you're not really going to see a huge difference or any difference at all in your temperature range. It's always a good idea to read through and understand some of the calibrations or settings that you're changing, but for those that are wanting to step in and not wanting to feel overwhelmed, 
keep in mind that primarily you just need to focus on your flow rate and your pressure advance. The rest you can figure out as you become a little bit more comfortable, but these two are highly recommended to get the best quality out of your 3D printer. Again, nothing we're talking about here today is exactly groundbreaking or really advanced, but getting the basics down is really important. And these tips hopefully give you a few more options when you're 3D printing. 